Hello everyone, I'm Dan and I don't talk enough about game audio on this channel, so today I'm dedicating a whole video to me setting up my template with Nucleus. It is quite eye-wateringly expensive, but it does have some really juicy orchestral samples. But they're also a little bit fiddly to work with, so I'm just going to make that process a little bit easier for myself. The first thing I'm going to need help with is keeping in time, because I don't know if you noticed, but... That's quite a lot of delay between me hitting a key and the sound coming out of the speakers. That's because in order for Nucleus to do all of its gorgeous realistic orchestra magic, it needs to know what you're about to play. So it adds in 250 milliseconds of delay so that it can figure out what you're about to do. Then it can do all sorts of interesting transitions and realistic noises and stuff like that. This is obviously no good for actually playing music though. So in the advanced tab, there's this option to turn it all the way down to zero milliseconds so that it responds instantly to any key that you press. So what I want to do is I want to map that sample start to a button on my MIDI keyboard so that I can just easily flip between those whenever I need to do some recording. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expose this parameter to Ableton Live. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this triangle here and I'm going to click configure. Then I'm just going to wiggle this knob a bit and there we go, sample start right there. If we change it here, it changes in the UI. This basically means we can now automate it using Ableton's tools. Now, if we do a little bit of housekeeping on our project, get rid of all of these here and we're just going to create a fresh new return track and we're going to call this recording mode because it's going to control that parameter. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to audio effects. We're going to go find pitch and modulation or modulators. There we go, LFO. This Max for Live device automatically generates a value for you, but we aren't interested in that. So we're just going to turn that all the way down. What we're interested in is this offset knob, which just directly controls the value for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit MIDI map and then I'm going to click a button on my keyboard like that, which makes a mapping between them. If we get rid of that, now whenever we click that button, you can see that LFO is going up and down in response to whether it's turned on or turned off. With that in tow, we can now click map, we can go back to our contact instrument and we can choose sample start. So now when we click this button, it toggles between 250 milliseconds of delay and zero milliseconds of delay. One of which is more ideal for recording while the other one is more ideal for realistic audio. Anyway, let's get my head back in here so that we can try this out. Let's play something first, using it uh, all the way at 250. I mean, it's kind of rubbish, to be honest. But what we can do if we want to make it not so rubbish, we can click this button here. So it's now in recording mode. And now if we try it, it will be much more tight. Just like that, it plays perfectly in time with me hitting the keys, or at least as much as my hardware allows. And of course, the best bit is because it's a global toggle, I just hit the button after I'm done and then I get the nice realistic audio. That sounded lovely. So now let's add some other instruments into this song. So I'm gonna add a MIDI track. Let's go to my plugins, let's go for piano tech. Let's add some piano, you know. Pianos, who doesn't love them? But I'm not really interested in playing anything original. Let's just double what the pizzicato strings are doing and we'll just play them together. I mean, the syncopation was interesting. Anyway, the problem I'm getting at here is that now all of our stuff is out of time, which just kind of... <clears throat> Unfortunately, the way we have to fix this is we have to delay all of those tracks when recording mode is turned off, which unfortunately means we're going to have to hack something together using Max for Live devices again. So get out of here, head. Let's go over to our audio effects. We're still on our piano tech track here and we're going to go down to utilities and add in an align delay. And we're actually gonna add in three of them. We'll link together all of the delays down here and we'll set these two to 100 and we'll set this one to 50. And we'll just group all of them together for nice organization. So what this will do is this will delay our piano by 250 milliseconds. So hopefully it will line up with our pizzicato strings. Yep, 
theory checks out. However, there's a bit of a problem here because uh, that's going to apply all the time. So if I just turn on our recording mode toggle and now we listen back to it. No, thank you. So what we actually need to do is we need to toggle this group on and off whenever recording mode turns on and off. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to go down to our recording thing again, and we're going to click on this little line menu. This opens up a bunch of mapping things that we can use. So we're just gonna click on one, we're gonna go over to Piano Tech, and we're just gonna click on this group. So now that group is controlled by the recording mode. So let's take a listen to see if we got this the right way around. No, we did not even get it the right way around, but we can fix this by just going to recording mode here. And we're just gonna set this to 100 and this to zero, which is the opposite way around from what it normally is. So now if we listen to it, it should be fine. And of course, because we are scientists here, if we click the button, it should still sound in time. Sounds good to me. Anyway, that's really the big problem out of the way. Now the rest of this is just creating a bunch of tracks with all the different instruments. So I'll see you when I've done that. All right, so it's many hours later now. And as you can see, I have finished. Uh, these are almost all of the nucleus instruments, uh, except for a few that I don't actually like. And you can see I've got all of the different variants out in their own track because I don't like using the key switches. I think this is much more obvious and it also helps surface some uh, sounds that I would not otherwise use. And uh, also I've got all the synchronization stuff. I've got a click track here so I can easily just press the button on my MIDI keyboard and it will automatically sync things up for recording or for playback. So to demonstrate this, let me just make a piano thing. And uh, no, we'll just put it on every single beat. So if we were to loop that out, you could hear. Yeah, that's exactly what we expect, except it's obviously delayed by 250 milliseconds. If we press the recording mode button, it now becomes uh, properly synced up with Ableton Live. And we can turn it back off again and it's desynced again. So the important thing here is that this additional instruments group is for everything that's not Nucleus. And uh, all of the Nucleus instruments, if we actually take a look inside of them, you can see the sample start here is dynamically adjusted based on recording mode. Uh, so if I were to copy over this uh, piano click and then put it on the pizzicato for the violins, it stays perfectly in sync in playback mode. And if we turn on recording mode, you'll hear that it's still in sync, which is exactly what I want. And of course, recording mode has that really nice ultra snappy response time, low latency for recording, whereas the playback mode gives all of those realistic details. So it's a really handy toggle. So now I can just make this an Ableton Live template and we are done basically. Uh, I can use this going forward for all of my orchestral compositions and I'll have really easy access to all of my sounds, really easy access to the latency controls, everything will be perfect. So it was kind of a bit of a short kind of niche video today, but hopefully it's relevant for some of you guys who want to get into doing game music and orchestral composition yourself, just to see how someone like me might set up their template file. Anyway, that's about it for today. I've been Dan and I will see you guys very, very soon. Have fun.